Hello there, my name is Hido and welcome to the Pantheon, where today we're in Dungeons and Dragons land. It's all rather bizarre, I don't know really what's happening, but there's a lot of cool things including uh, a bit of gnome action with Oswald Fiddlebender, which is a wonderful name, two mana for a 2-2 two -two legendary creature, gnome artificer, and he does some magical tinkering, which I assume is a Dungeons and Dragons sort of thing. Maybe it's an ability you can do. I, I, I have no idea. But you can pay a white, tap him, sacrifice an artifact, search your library for an artifact card with mana value equal to one plus the sacrificed artifact's mana value. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Activate only as a sorcery. So this is obviously a take on birthing pod. And in mono white, it's really, really cool. And it's a nice bit of card advantage for mono white. You know, you can search for exact sort of cards that you want. The problem with these sorts of cards is they are very deterministic. You know, once you've got a, a line of play in set, set in stone, you're always really going to be playing that line. So yeah, a bit of yin and yang, tutoring, cool, but it can get a bit repetitive. But having said that, I think it's quite cool and it's a nice direction for white to go into. You know, green's had a sort of monopoly on birthing pod, having, well, birthing pod. And then Vanifar, you know, being blue and green. So seeing white get the artifact version is really, really nice. I would have actually expected it to go to red, but having it in white is really good. If you like these videos, please do consider subscribing, making one of these for every single legendary creature ever printed. And there's a lot of them. So I'll be doing this for quite a while. Without further ado, let's have a look at the top five. And at number five, we've got Ancient Den. A land that's an artifact. And the cool thing with this commander is you can sacrifice your land, if it's an artifact, to get a one drop so you can turn your Ancient Den into a Soul Ring. Nice bit of mana ramp, absolutely fantastic. So having this in your mana base is free information. You know, you're getting free stuff. To go along with this, well, what are a couple of one drops we can get? Arkham's Astrolabe is a classic uh, artifact. For a snow mana, you get a snow artifact. Snow can be paid for you know, a snow mana. So if you've got snow lands, you can play this. When it's the battlefield, draw a card, and you can pay one to tap it to add one mana of any color. So it's not ramp, but it is nice filtering. And the fact that when it comes in, it draws you a card for sacrificing a land, that's pretty goddamn nice. And just, you know, this is a cool card to have in the deck because this can start the chain off at one. So this can be sacrificed for a two drop. Then another really cool one drop is uh, Esper Sentinel, a human soldier. It's an artifact. Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card unless that player pays X, where X is Esper Sentinel's power. And it's a 1-1, one, one, so this is a really nice card advantage engine in Mono White. And because we can tutor it up from a land, or, you know, any zero-cost artifacts, this is fantastic. And if it's, uh, you know, I, you've used it enough, you know, you've got a bit of advantage, or your opponents have just given up paying for it, you can sack it in and get Ica Wellspring, two-mana artifact, when into the battlefield, or is put into a grave from the battlefield, draw a card. So this is fantastic because when you tutor it up, you're going to be drawing a card. And then when you sacrifice it for a three drop artifact, you're going to draw a card then as well. Lots of advantage to be had. Then another one drop is Kundra's Bauble. So it's one mana for an artifact. You can tap it and sacrifice it. Put up to one target card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. Draw a card. So again, nice bit of card advantage and Putting a card on the bottom of your library in this deck is really quite powerful because we can shoot that card up again. Say one of our big, you know, hitters, one of our big drops has uh, been killed, we can sacrifice another artifact to go and fetch it out of the uh, deck again. Then another good one drop we could search up is Brainstone. One mana for an artifact, pay two and tap it and sacrifice it. Draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. So again, this works very similarly. If we have, you know, something big that we want to cheat out, but it's in our hand, we can shuffle it back into the deck and then just tutor it up onto the field. Really, really nice. Finally, Mox Opal is another great zero mana artifact. It's legendary, but it has metal craft. Tap it, add one mana of any color, activate this ability only if you control three or more artifacts. We're going to have quite a few artifacts in this deck because, well, I mean, it's all about artifacts, you know, sacrificing them, tutoring them up. So this should be a nice bit of ramp. Which brings me on to number four. And at number four, we've got Taranika, a Crowan veteran. This card, when it first came out, I just thought, dear God, how terrible this is. But three mana for a 3-3 with Vigilance. The reason we're playing it, 
Whenever it attacks, untap another tag creature you control. Till end of turn, that creature has base power and toughness 4 4 and gains indestructible. So, with our commander, we're going to be tapping it, paying the one and sacrifice something. This, when it attacks, we get to untap our commander and we can do it all over again, getting another couple of triggers, searching for whatever we want. And this is the theme of this it's untap effects. So, 1000 year elixir, three mana for an artifact. You may play activated ability to creature controls, though those creatures have haste. And you can pay one and tap it to untap target creature. So we can get another use out of it. And because this is an artifact, we can search it up using our commander and use it straight away to get another use. So you can really chain upwards to get to, you know, four mana. Thornbite Staff is another great card for this. Two mana for a tribal artifact shaman equipment. Crit creature has, pay two, tap it. This creature deals one damage to target your player. Not bothered about that. But whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, untap this creature. So if this is attached to our commander and we're sacrificing artifact creatures, every time we sacrifice one, we're going to untap our commander, search through our deck, and then we can use him again and again and again and just churn our way through the deck to get to the big drops that we want to be getting to. Then finally, Mage Rite Stone, two mana for an artifact, pay one, tap it, untap tag creature that has an activated ability with tap in its cost. Coincidentally, our commander has a tap ability. Ooh. Who would have thought this would be a good card? Which brings me on to my number three pick. And at number three, we've got liquid, 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 there's no D, liquid metal talk. Two mana for an artifact. Tap it for a colorless, which is really nice. You know, two mana rocks are always powerful, but you can tap it, tag it, non-land permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn, which is really, really nice, you know, when we're untapping our commander, well, what if we made him into an artifact? Well, we could untap him with a couple of different things. Liquid Metal Coating is the card that this card is based on. Two mana for an artifact. Tap target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn. So this works on lands, so we can start up our chain at one, or we can, you know, any other creature we have on the field, we can use that, that to make it into an artifact and search up whatever artifact we want by sacrificing it. Then we've got Metal Worker, a fantastic tap artifact. And if we're going to be untapping things, this is phenomenal in the deck. Three mana for a one, two. Tap it, reveal any number of artifact cards in your hand. Add two cost mana for, you know, to your mana pool for each card revealed this way. This can ramp us into all of our massive spells, the, you know, Blight, Steel, Colossus, and things like that. And if you have something like Voltaic Construct, which is a, a great card in this deck, Four mana for a 2-2 and pay two to untap target artifact creature. Well, if Metal Worker, you reveal two uh, artifacts, going to be making four mana, you just pay two to untap it. We've got infinite mana, we can just keep doing it over and over again. But with our commander, if we manage to turn him into an artifact, Voltaic Construct can untap him for just two mana. Really, really nice and can help you churn through the deck if you have enough mana available. Then Voltaic Key is a great card for untapping artifacts. One mana for an artifact, pay one. Tap, untap target artifact. So it works, works with all of our artifact ramp, but you know, all of these artifact creatures and stuff that we're gonna have works fantastic with them as well. Kuldotha Forge Master, five mana for an artifact construct, creature. Sacrifice three artifacts, search your library for an artifact card and put it into the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. Now this just cuts straight to the chase. You know, we just sacrifice three of our rubbish little artifacts. And we get the Blight Steel Colossus. We don't have to chain our way up. It's just another great way that we can use tap abilities in the deck. And then Palladium Mirror, three mana for an artifact creature Mirror, tap for two colors, and it's a two, two. So this is another great thing that we can untap. And when you're playing these sort of like chains of things, you know, you want to be getting to the higher mana cost, you really want to put in a lot of ramp as well, because you want to be able to, if we can't chain into them, well, at least cast the big things anyway. Which brings me on to number two. And at number two, we've got a couple of ways to bring back our artifacts. You know, we're going to be sacrificing them, so they're going to go to the graveyard. And we want to get them back. We want to make sure we can reuse them, cast them, things like that. And Sanctum Gargoyle is the epitome of that for me. Four mana for a 2-3 with flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is great. If you chain into it, you know, you're paying one mana, sacrificing a three drop, getting this. Return the three drop to your hand and just keep on going. It's really, really cool. Then Mirror Retriever, two mana for a mirror. 
When it dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. This is a dies trigger, so we do have to be sacrificing it to our commander or something else, but this works fantastically and just can get you tons of value. Then we've got Oriox Salvages, four mana for a two four. And if you're playing a sort of egg centered deck, um, you know, sacrificing your lands, lots of cheap artifacts that draw your cards, this is the card for you. Two mana, return target artifact card with converted mana cost one or less from your graveyard to your hand. And it's a two four, so this can get absolutely tons of value. And if you have Lion's Eye Diamond, you know, it's a zero mana artifact that taps for taps and sacks for three of any color, but you do have to discard your hand. This can keep rebuying it. You know, you make three white, use two of it to return it, cast it for free, and then you make infinite mana, which is, uh, well, it's something you could do, isn't it? Scrap Trawler, three mana for a three, two. When it or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard into the battlefield, return to your hand target artifact card in a graveyard with lesser converted mana cost. So with our commander on the field, this can just generate absolutely tons of value, like really get back everything that you're sacrificing you can cast it again get absolutely loads of value if you have a zero mana artifact that you can sack you know like mishra's bauble this every time you're sacking something else to your commander you can draw a card on the next upkeep really quite cool then junk diver classic three mana one one flying when it dies return another artifact from your graveyard to your hand simples simples very very simple then we've got our Givian, uh, 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 I, 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 uh, I don't know, find, it's a one mana instant, return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Very simple, very effective, does exactly what you want. It's not card advantage, but it's pretty damn good. Then Frantic Salvage, four mana for an instant, put any number of target artifact cards from your graveyard on top of your library. Then draw a card. So whichever the one you want to get back first, Put that on top and then draw it. And then you can sacrifice with your commander to get anything else back that you've then shuffled into your deck. Really, really nice card. Which brings me on to what, number one. And this card reminds me of uh, my friend Dave. You know, he's, he's he's all right. He's not the best person in the world, but he, uh, you know, he... Anyway, number one, it's Sojourner's Companion. It's a big axolotl salamander sort of thing. Very, very Dave-esque. Seven mana for an artifact creature with affinity for artifacts. And to 4-4, four, four, it's got artifact land cycling. So, you know, <laughs> need I say more? Cycling, best mechanic ever printed. And, you know, artifact lands work exceptionally well in this deck. But the main reason we're playing this is for the affinity. Because affinity reduces the cost of our cards. So if we have seven artifacts on the field, this we, we can cast this for zero mana. But with our commander, when we sacrifice it, we can go and get an eight drop. So having that massive reduction is just phenomenal in the deck. And this card just works on so many levels. We get a cheap reduction, get an eight drop, but what eight drops can we get? Well, here's another version of this, Mirror Enforcer. Seven mana, affinity for artifacts, four, four. Exactly the same card, except it doesn't have cycling, so it may as well be destroyed. Possess Portal, eight mana for an artifact. If a player would draw a card, that player skips that draw strip instead. Well, you're not going to make friends with this card. And at the end of each turn, each player sacrifices his opponent unless he or she discards a card from his other hand. <laughs> it's just going to be miserable to play against. But you can ramp this out ridiculously flat fast. Say you're playing like an eggs sort of deck. You've splurged your hand, played your seven mana dude. Your commander's on the field. On turn three, we could be searching this up. And uh, everyone's going to be really unhappy. It's just uh, just the way it is. The best thing to do is to empty your opponent's hand and then all the <laughs> just have to keep sacrificing opponents. They can't draw any cards. And you just sit there laughing with a 2-2 two -two dwarf thing. No, it's a gnome. It's not a dwarf. My mistake. Sorry. Sorry about that. Then there's Platinum Imper Imperium. A more fun 8-drop that you could tutor up. To Golem, your life total can't change. It's 8 to 8. So if you manage to give this indestructible, you know, maybe give it Shroud with a couple of equipment, so, stuff like that, you can sort of make yourself indestructible. Because if your life total can't change, yes, you can lose the game to other things, but most of the time people are going to be attacking you in Commander, aren't they? So if you can stop that, well, well done on you. Then we've got the big boy here. Mycosynth Golem. 11 mana for a 4-5 with affinity for artifacts. Artifact creature spells you play, 
have affinity for artifacts. So all of our artifacts are going to be really, really cheap. So we can sacrifice them, get out big stuff. And conveniently, this costs 11 mana. One up from 11. Well, it's the only artifact that costs 12 mana. Apart from that uh, new Scion of Draco, but we're playing a one color deck, so it's not very good. Blight Steel Colossus, 12 mana for an 11 11. Trample, infect, indestructible. If you were put into your grave from anywhere, reveal it and shuffle it into his owner's library instead. Really, really awesome. Absolutely wonderful. Cheating it out with Magasynth Goal, it was just so much fun. Play Magasynth Goal for like three mana, sacrifice it. Oh dear God, it's Blight Steel Colossus. And then if you have an equipment which gives this haste, Everyone's dead. Well, at least one person is probably, probably. Maybe they have a blocker. They have a 2-2 two -two blocker, they're on nine effect. Ooh, scary. Then, <coughs> sorry about that. The final card we've got is Razor Golem. Six mana for a golem with affinity for planes. Now, shockingly enough, in a mono white deck, we're going to be playing a fair few planes. Attacking creature, <laughs> attacking doesn't cause Razor Golem to tap. That's, um, Vigilance, but before Vigilance, ooh, we're going into the history box here. So this can search up a nice seven drop and you know, it's gonna cost not much mana, pretty good. And those are my top five picks for this brand new commander. It looks really cool to be fair, you know, a pod is a pod, but I do worry that it will get a bit repetitive. So, you know, Take that into account. Your opponents might get a bit bored of seeing you, you know, take out the same lines over and over again. But hey ho, it's mono white. <laughs> At least it's not life gain, you know, it's more interesting than that. Thank you very much for watching. I've enjoyed making this. If you like this, please do like, comment, subscribe, send a carrier pigeon uh with cards to me, something like that. I don't I don't know. Um yeah. Play a bugle. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.